Howdy! Just letting people know that I'm going to the British Gaming and Anime Convention Alcon this September. I'm going to be hosting a Q&A and animation quiz live. If you're interested, then head over to the Alcon website now. I hope to see you there! Howdy folks, Jambariki here, and welcome to the 100th episode of Jambariki Reviews. Oh! Now, who is Hayao Miyazaki? Hayao Miyazaki is a Japanese animation filmmaker who is best known for his fantasy movies, each one laced with themes of environment, flight, war, magic, and the spirit world. His work is revered, and I have to call myself a fan. Miyazaki's movies retain a sense of wonder, enchantment, and imagination. They're unique, inventive, charming, and incredibly memorable. In 2013, Miyazaki sadly announced his retirement from feature-length filmmaking, but this is like the fifth, sixth time he's announced retirement, so I wouldn't be surprised if by next year he comes out of retirement to make such classics as Howl's Moving Stairs, Flying Princess Castle, Kiki's Drug Cartel, the Fate of Porco Rosso, Totoro vs. Mechagodzilla, and Spirited Away 2, Chihiro's Revenge. But let's just say that Miyazaki has retired for now. If that's the case, then his last movie was The Wind Rises. The Wind Rises is a hand-drawn animated romantic drama. It follows the life of a World War II airplane designer called Jiro and his relationship with a woman called Nako. It's inspired by the real lives of Jiro Horikoshi and Tatsuyo Hori. This film opens on a strong note, showing promise for something exciting and interesting. The first act focuses on Jiro's growing passion for aircraft as a child and teenager, while bouncing between reality and Jiro's subconscious mind. These ideas set a wonderful tone for what's possibly yet to come. Unfortunately, the film then goes downhill once Jiro becomes an adult. Sure, the movie sometimes focuses on Jiro's successful aeronautical engineering career, but the movie also pads out the narrative with scenes of Jiro doing mundane activities like casually smoking, wandering about, and chatting to hotel guests. Now and again, there's a little conflict or a flashy dream sequence, but then soon things carry on as normal. This slice of lifestyle of storytelling is charming at first, but quickly becomes boring and makes the film feel longer than it needs to be. What weighs the movie down even more has to be a very lackluster, uninspired, and underdeveloped romantic subplot. Sure, Jiro and his love interest Naoko look cute together, but there's so much depth and weight missing from their romance. They only share a few scenes together, and these scenes are widely spaced apart, yet the movie expects us to be won over by their love story. There are many emotionally loaded scenes, but I felt nothing. I wasn't connected to them, I didn't believe in their romance. This makes the romance feel forced and melodramatic. Another reason why I found it very hard to get sucked into this movie's drama has to be the bizarre, unintentionally funny elements of the film. Heck, I wasn't even sure whether some parts were meant to be comical or not. It sends mixed signals. A few of the characters have very silly, weird, and cartoony designs, and this makes the drama very hard to take seriously at points. The film also often uses human voices for sound effects, which is a very unique creative decision that sometimes works, but for the most part is distractingly hilarious! I kept giggling at all these silly noises! Maybe I'm just really immature, but I felt as if these sound effects were too silly for a film like this. Sure, it could have worked for Porco Rosso, a comedy, but a serious drama? No! As much as it pains me to do this to a Miyazaki film, I'm going to have to give only two points to the content of this film. Jiro is a very humble and reserved gentleman. He often cares about other people, enough to look out for strangers. But what I like the most about him is how passionate and engaged he gets when it comes to the subject of aircraft. My favourite parts of the film were when Jiro showed excitement and interest to the world of airplanes. However, the film wastes him as a character in favour of padding and a flat romantic subplot. Nako, Jiro's love interest, is a very bland and forgettable character. 
We don't really get to learn much about her except that she likes to paint, and the film doesn't even explore her interest in painting. I feel like her love for Jiro is her only defining character trait, and that's not very good character development. The film tries so hard to make us worry about her, but she left no impression on me, so I didn't care about her. So while Naoko isn't a very interesting character, at least Jiro is likeable, so I'm going to give three points to the characters of this film. The animation, as expected from Miyazaki's studio, is very pretty, fancy, and fluid. The most impressive visuals come from the airplane flights. The planes fly with a lot of grace and elegance, and when they fail, they strip apart and expose their fantastically detailed inner workings. However, the character animation is quite unremarkable and sometimes a bit awkward. On the one hand, it can be way too passive and understated. I mean, some of the characters show the same expression all the way through the film. This makes the movie feel even more flat and stuffy than it already is. On the other hand, like I said, this film can be unintentionally funny, and the animation is no exception. I watched this movie with a group of friends, and like me, they're animation students, and even they felt as if that a lot of the character animation came across as unintentionally silly. For example, there's a German hotel guest that Jiro meets. He's supposed to come across as charming and friendly, but his design and animation is so odd and goofy that he comes across as hilariously weird and creepy instead. I'm going to have to give the animation for this film just two points. Hideaki Anno, the creator of the cult mecha anime series Neon Genesis Evangelion, voices Jiro. He sounds very laid back and gentle, which really suits Jiro's humble and sympathetic nature. His voice may sound a bit too dry for some people, though. Miyori Takamoto voices Naoko. Despite having a very underwritten character, she takes advantage of what she's been given and sounds very heartfelt, tender, and sweet. I'm going to give the voice acting for this film four points. The music for this film, which was composed by Ghibli regular Joe Asashi, sounds very European influenced. And while this certainly paints an atmosphere for scenes set in Europe, it sounds questionably jarring in scenes set in Tokyo. However, the music certainly captures the intrigue, passion, commitment and invention of Jiro's aeronautical engineering. The music often conjures up feelings of devotion and dedication. It's a shame that this film doesn't have much interesting material to work with because, well, Joe Seishi is a very talented composer. I'm going to give the music for this film three points. To conclude, while it has a promising start, The Wind Rises goes in a very underwhelming direction full of padding, stuffy drama, forced romance, and baffling creative decisions. Sure, it has some beautiful air flight sequences and a fairly likeable protagonist, but I wanted Miyazaki's career to end with a bang, not a whimper. Despite all the affectionate praise and success that this film has received, I think this movie is only worth seeing if you're a Studio Ghibli completionist. The Wind Rises has gained a total of 14 points, which translates to two and three quarters wing strawberries out of five. However, if you enjoyed such titles as Porco Rosso or Grave of the Fireflies, then you may get a little something out of this movie. So, have you seen The Wind Rises? If so, then let me know what you thought of the film in the comments section below. If you haven't seen The Wind Rises, then do you want to? Do you not want to? And why? I've been Jamboriki and I hope you enjoyed my review. If you did, then click the like button below. If you're new to my channel, then feel free to subscribe! In the next episode, I'm going to get very nostalgic and review the Wild Thornberrys movie. Cheerio, folks. <laughs>